Welcome back. This is World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. What is the essence of architecture in the eyes of an architect? Ma Yan Song, who is one of the most well-celebrated architects of his generation, has his own interpretations. Ma was born in Beijing, a place he called a playground when he was little. He shuttled atop the roofs of traditional hutong homes and acquired an appreciation for the natural elements that comprise a Chinese garden. His childhood experiences laid the foundation for his future architectural flair. Hutong Bubble 32 is one of his design concepts. Let's take a look at this interesting work. How did you come up with the idea? Bubbles. I want to reflect the surroundings. You see this reflection? Yes. You can see yourself. Distor uh, distorted. Same for the surrounding building, the sky, the tree, all distorted. It's very different <laughs> from the rest of the courtyard, isn't it? Yeah. You got two bubbles? Yes. Where's the other? The other one is near Tiananmen Square. Ah. Yeah, another courtyard. We love bubbles, don't we? Bubbles. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember your childhood, huh? You uh -huh. blow the bubbles. It was so much fun in that hutong, right? <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. So where does this inspiration come from? I think Beijing at, at the moment when I created this, Beijing was all about the uh, monumental buildings, big buildings. But I think maybe this is a very personal. Yeah. It belongs to I love you know, it. one small courtyard. So small, cute, and the reflection. Also, I want to challenge the idea um, only traditional building, looking building can, can be uh, created in the traditional uh, neighborhood. So because we to, have to renew them anyway, right? Yeah, at some point, if mm. you, we think 100, 200 years. Yeah. Have you ever lived here? No. For example, spending the night with your bubble? I used to drink here. <laughs> <laughs> Was it good? Yes. Does it feel good? Spend some time with Bubbly my friends. Wine. Yeah, yeah. Beijing City gave me a big impact. Because um, <laughs> It's, it's more like a playground for me. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, I learned how to swim in, in Hohai. Uh -huh. And uh, we have a mountains, right? We have a beautiful nature, in, like a park in the city center. So every day after school, I, I, I go there. So I live also uh, around this area. Uh -huh. And in the Hutong area, it's all, also playful. You have a neighborhood and all the kids. Uh, we go up to the roof. Because only from the roof you can go from one courtyard to another. So I think uh, the nature become uh, the key um, to the city. You have a space. You, only, you, do, you don't only have the buildings, but also the nature, the mountain, the river, the lake. Ma, you know, China seems to, at least, have a lot of wealth accumulated over the past 20 to 30 years. Meanwhile, you also have China that's building infrastructure everywhere with the so-called China speed and quite good quality. How do you see, as an architect, all these changes and elements are having an impact on your customer thinking about the architectures and also your own designing capabilities and directions recently? I think uh, those are great things. Great things. Everyone thinks that's a great. I think also great. But uh, I, my habit is I, I see everything from critical part. <laughs> I think uh, architecture has to deal with uh, people. Uh, being grand or, or biggest or tallest is not the key. Um, how people feel it uh, is a key. Um, 
So that's my challenge, I think. Um, and uh, to understand this point is also a challenge because um, you can easily feel good otherwise, uh, especially after this uh, pandemic. Uh, the, the, the West, uh, my colleague from the West also have a less um, projects. Uh, so the new concept, new ideas merge slow, slower than before. And uh, so if you don't have a, your own agenda, it's easily uh, getting lost. And or just get by easily. Yeah, you get easily. You think, oh, I'm already doing good, doing the biggest, or, or, or that's, that, that's, that's easy. I mean, probably build a, a tallest building in the world was the, the, the big thing, but now people going to Mars. This is a, building, a building is not, a, it's not really challenging. So when I look back to all the traditional or historical masterpiece, no matter what the scale, but they all touch um, humans' uh, inner emotion. They're, so after hundreds of years, people still fall still in love. Still feel it. Yeah, yeah, that's really uh, moving, really powerful. What echoes with you? Uh, so I always, I always like this American architect called Louis Kahn. He already passed away. His uh, masterpiece called the Sock Institute. It's a modern building with a square in the middle facing ocean. It's really um, a spiritual uh, place. And um, when I go there, I, go, I went there several times. Uh, when I go, it's uh, San Diego, uh, California. I always see people sitting there uh, Look, looking at the ocean, the sky. It's a really uh, beautiful, also moving uh, place. Sometimes I imagine, maybe after thousands of years, people find this place, they still feel, oh, this is a genius. And uh, I like Gaudi as well. Gaudi is a, a really artistic and a special person. He's a special, he's a proof that the human beings are, are great <laughs> without them. It's more boring. <laughs> <laughs> the building is not only about material, technology, or function. It, it's already automatically include all these uh, art and the senses, the feelings. So all these things, so I think, uh, from the past is really the, the force make me feel, you know, we should do something similar today. I see an architect and an artist sitting right in front of me, Ma when I see you today. But I know you are also a team leader. You have to make your team energetic about the ideas that you have in mind. And sometimes describe those ideas to them, which you cannot even describe in language to yourself. How are you doing it? I think uh, we all struggle. Sometimes you invent a method that you can apply to different team and uh, projects. But I don't do that because I try to find a unique thing through different projects. So I'm looking for that struggle for, through every project. I'm, so I have to give that to my team <laughs> as well. But I try to use this discussion as an opportunity to imagine things. We are in a very different period of time, isn't it? Ma, I mean, you graduated from Yale University at that time when you were in the university or just graduated, China is on the rise. And over the past few years, everybody wanted to come over here, work with China, let's see whether we could find some gold here, you know, but also find the talents here in China. Now we are going through a very different period of time. The pandemic, of course, separated many of us worldwide. Um, meanwhile, China is going through a very unique stage of experience in which China is trying to find ways to explain itself to the others, mm -hmm. while others have a mixture of misconceptions and uh, hard efforts to understand China. So how do you see this as having an impact on you as an architecture, uh, architect, and also just as a Chinese artist? You know, simply put. 
I don't want people look at me, think I'm special because I'm from China. Because um, I want them to like my architecture because they're special, because they cannot do it. Right now we have a buildings in America, in Europe, in different places. They they have a lot of uh, teachers, like like when I was a student. So so I see them as uh, examples. I learn from them. But what I learn is uh, they are really critical and uh, creative and uh, always trying to do things differently. I think that's what China needs to um, do something new and uh, beneficial to other people as well. I remember when I. Um, graduated from Yale, my, my dean told me, now you, it's a day you should forget everyone you have heard from our teachers. Um, I think that's, uh, that's important, that's uh, cool, and uh, <laughs> that's uh, important uh, for everyone to eventually find yourself. Uh, so I think we learned a lot from the West. Um, and uh, to discover our tradition and find out what the future could be, what the inspiration we can learn from that um, is our job. In recent years, many of Ma's designs echoed his idea of the Shan Shui City, a vision to create a new balance among society, the city, and the environment through architecture. He has created a series of imaginative works which have dazzled the world. Lotus Pond. Water lily blossom. Nice. For Paris, you have a sunshine, beautiful nature, surrounded by a city. Really cool. It's beautiful. So when are we going to have this ready? Next year. So many projects take so much energy. How did you do it? I mean, how are you doing it? Well, actually, I'm selecting projects. I cannot handle too much. Mm. This is a, more or less like a studio, like art, artist studio. So I need to hands on on every project, on every level, every detail. So I have a limited <laughs> energy, actually. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Mm. How would you describe your style, though? People see you doing so many different kinds of projects. I like nature. I think uh, architecture is a second nature. Um, it sh we should uh, not only building objects, but also environment that people can have an emotional connection to this environment. So probably natural is my, is my style. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. I don't know if I have a style, because sometimes style means some language, fixed language, or some very special shapes, but I change. Every time I do things differently, because I want to build up this uh, unique dialogue to different uh, uh, environment. There were a time when everybody's building iconic architecture around the world, and you see so many master names, but it seems that we are graduating from that period of time. And as you said, yourself is a reflection of that with nature. Uh, do you see it as an evolution or just as a different styles of an architect at different stages? But now, we, everyone talking about uh, fixing the nature environment and making a uh, city sustainable. But uh, I think creativity still should be a uh, very important key uh, because um, we cannot uh, making uh, green, boring cities. That's another uh, issue. So I, f for sure, um, the architecture will change. Uh, 
we need to pay more attention to the environment and uh, and, uh, and energy and the green. But um, um, the creativity should be st still there. You know, this transformation, which not only preserve the creativity, but also to work with your surrounding even more than most uh, architects did before. This transformation is very interesting. I'm sure you put a lot of thoughts into it. You know, sometimes maybe cannot find the directions. Maybe sometimes it's easy to get. Tell me more about this transformation that you're making together with other architects. I think sometimes when we call iconic buildings in the past, uh, it's a more uh, about making a stamp, making um, a trademark for a place. So people pay more attention to that. So that attract a lot of attention to, to, the, to such a project or, or place. It's a rather a commercial driven thing. Um, uh, but now I think uh, we need to talk about uh, average people like in the city, like how people feel, like how, um, how this is meaningful to more people. To them. To, to everyone. So, so when you do public buildings or public space, first you need to open this space. You cannot close it. So it needs to be open and everyone can occupy that. And um, second, it also needs to be a um, spiritual place. Because it's not good enough just offering a space. You need to offer a quality space. Uh, so An ambience also. Yes. Also has to be beautiful, has to be um, imaginary. It has to help people to do things, to beautiful things, like good, good things to each other, and encourage people to meet each other, talk to each other. Which project makes you think about that? Mm, mm, most of my projects are public uh, projects. So mm, almost all the projects, I think about this. I don't do private. Uh, Houses. Um, I think, for example, the, the kindergarten I, I, I designed in Beijing. in Beijing. It's called the uh, uh, courtyard kindergarten because there's an old building inside the site, and then we create this uh, colorful roof um, around this old building. And kids can go around, uh, can, they can run around the roof. Um, Kids, they don't talk. They don't. They, you, 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 you can only guess what they like, right? Uh, but what I know as a parents, I want to offer them the real thing. I don't want to, um, for example, make the new building look like old. I want to. The, I want the new building, and old building, to be uh, clearly different, and they can still coexist and talk to each other. So when Kids, they they play in this space. They know what's real, what's old, what's new, and uh, what's the future. Did you try your kids? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. They're too they're, they're too old. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think the deeper meaning for me, I don't know if they can feel it. It's uh, uh, I want to use this small project to reflect the bigger thinking. Um, What's uh, the relationship in bet between new and old? Because in our city, I'm a Beijing person, and I, we have always a struggle. Uh, you, you respect the old, so you have to do something look like old. Uh, that's not the real. That's a, uh, being beautiful or not, that's the second thing. But uh, you have to be respectful to the real um, life. Talking about romantic. This is a people call Marilyn Monroe Towers. <laughs> we built this uh, many years ago in Toronto, Canada. Yes. Was that the original idea, Marilyn Monroe? No, we just want to do something curvy. <laughs> we want to do something not boxy, mm -hmm. not boxy. So we make this a very um, organic, natural form. Mm -hmm. That's the Beijing thing. That's a Beijing uh, tower we, we call Shanshui, um, next to the Chaoyang Park. So we want to make modern towers, modern architecture, part of the nature. 
you know, overlooking the CCTV from CCTV, I could still see this building. Yeah. Mm. Do you think uh, that's a part of the park? Interesting. It's an <laughs> interesting <laughs> park. <laughs> <laughs> you see this colorful roof. Yeah. That's a playground uh -huh. for kids. It's a kindergarten. Under the roof is uh, classrooms. We're connected to this uh, old courtyard house. Mm -hmm. So as a kid, you can go, you can use an uh, old house, new building, uh, as a one kindergarten, and then you can go up to the roof and then uh, run Which around. secretive corner is the most fun place to you? I think here. If you can, <laughs> you can climb here, then you can see the roof from high up. I see. Mm. The bridge. That's the latest project we just completed. It's called uh, a, a railway station in the forest, mm -hmm. but actually in the city center. We create this uh, green space. We put a whole uh, station underground. Wow. And then we kept one really old building. This one? That was a, a building built uh, more than 100 years ago. Oh, That's an older train station. So the new tr train station um, kept very low mm -hmm. to respect the old. Mm -hmm. So how would you get your inspirations? I'm, I, I'm abs absorbing everything I'm interested in without a goal. Like, so sometimes from movie, from magazine, from some art pieces. Oh, what kind so, of movie do you like watching? Yeah, I like all kinds of movies. Um, sometimes when I'm tired, I, I, I watch uh, funny movies. And I still remember, because uh, we are building the Lucas Museum. Yes. And, uh, and I remember when, when I do the competition, I, I didn't watch a Star Wars movie. So I want to uh, watch them all, but I, I always, fall asleep. I, I couldn't finish <laughs> uh, uh, all the episodes. Did you tell them that you <laughs> fall asleep? Uh, after we win the project, uh, George Lucas told me uh, he think all the Archie competitors watch too much Star Wars movies because <laughs> <laughs> they do things that are similar to the movie. But the funny thing is I asked him why you choose us. He, he said, I like one of your buildings. That's the uh, Erdos Museum we built in China. And I remember the reason I created that uh, metal bubble in the desert. That was uh, uh, one scenery that I remembered from, from one movie. And then later I discovered that's a Star Wars movie. I, I didn't remember. But that's how I collect information. I just uh, remember things that uh, I really feel strongly. And uh, I store them in my uh, had. I don't know, somehow, when you are struggled or, or nervous about something, these things will uh, jump out. The fascinating story of Ma Yan Song, a well-celebrated architect from China for the world. That's all we have for today. If you'd like to see more Search World Insight or check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei in Beijing on behalf of the team. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.